Okay, let's move on to the move tool. We've talked about the zoom tool and the hand tool. Now right underneath there on the left hand side, you'll see select and then there's the move tool right there. It looks like a little arrow with a plus sign next to it. So let's just say we wanna start with a blank sheet of paper. Let's say it's a scrapbook paper. So I'm gonna go file and new, blank file, control N or command N on the Mac. And notice here you have document type. You can also name it at this time if you want to. Let's just name this Oreos. And then this is gonna be document type. You have anything to choose from here, like US paper, international paper, photo paper, scrapbooking. Let's choose scrapbooking. That's gonna give us an automatic 12 by 12. If you like eight by eight or six by six, you can pick that at this time. Let's just choose 12 by 12. It's gonna be set to inches, so make sure, just kind of eyeball that to make sure it's right. 300 resolution, RGB color is fine. If you ever um, happen to find out that you can't add color, check to make sure that your RGB color is the color mode, because every once in a while, for some reason, I will start working on something and it's all grayscale. And I'm like, what is going on here? And then I go check the color mode and maybe I set it up wrong or something, but it should default to RGB color. I'm gonna keep the background contents as white, but you can choose any color background if you want to at this point. I usually keep it at white because we can always fill it with a paint bucket later. So this is gonna be called Oreos Scrapbooking 12 by 12, 12 inches by 12 inches, 300 DPI, RGB color and white. I'm gonna click on OK, and I'm just gonna move this to the side. Remember, if you don't have floating boxes, you might wanna go into your preferences to make sure that allow floating documents is checked. And that is inside of Edit, Preferences, General, and allow floating documents in expert mode is checked. So I'm gonna to go to File and Open. Remember, you can use the photo bin down here too. So I'm gonna open up all three or four of these photos. They're all four different photos. Now you can select more than one photo at a time by holding the shift key down like that, or you can click, you can left click on your mouse and highlight the ones that you wanna to take too. Or if you hold the control key down, you can take every other one. But I'm just gonna go ahead and highlight these four, click on open, and they're all gonna uh, float up here and if you click on photo bin, they're all gonna be down here as well. Now, what you can do is you can take this in the photo bin. Now, if you click on it, it will become active. You can drag and drop that into the page. It's probably the easier way. I'm just used to the other way. So whichever way works best for you. Then you can take it by one of the corners and you can make it smaller. If you notice that if you take it by one of these corners, you can do something like that, which is not a good thing, okay? You'll have to undo that, control Z, as in zebra, control Z or command Z on the keyboard for the Mac. That then takes it back to the original. But if you take it from the corner and you see that constrain proportions is checked, then you shouldn't have any problems taking it out of content as far as the proportions go, okay? So check that, and then you can take it from one of the corners, and then click on the commit current operation. So if I go back down into my photo bin, and I wanna take the next photo and bring it on in, drag it, drop it, then I can shrink it down. I'm using the move tool. That's what we're talking about here. I kind of failed to mention that because I just kind of um, forgot to. But here's the move tool. And if you wanted to do it this other way, see, I can close out of these now because it copied and pasted it in there. So it copied it and pasted it in there. So if I wanted to, I could take part of this photo. I'm gonna take my rectangle marquee tool. And we'll talk about the marquee tool a little bit more later, but I thought this was appropriate to talk about. I have the feather set at zero, and I can go in here and take a part of that, get my move tool, drag it, drop it on over to my page, OK? 
Okay, so that's what I'm kind of used to. I love this picture right here. He's just such an adorable little kid, isn't he? <laughs> He's all 12 years old now. Ah. Okay, so I'm gonna take part of this, get my move tool, drag and drop it into my page. So I just want you to get familiar with that move tool. If I didn't select anything in here and I took my move tool and I just drag and drop this, it will take the whole entire photo. So you can do that as well. Now look over here to the right. We'll talk about layers in more detail later, but here is when you're starting to work with layers. Super cool. You guys are going to absolutely love this, but I want you to get the tools down first before we start talking about layers. I want you to learn how to like lighten up photos, how to remove red eye, pimple remover, things like that before we even get into the layering. So you have a better understanding of what these tools on the left hand side does and then we can get into digital scrapbooking. So get familiar with that move tool, kind of play around with it. It might be frustrating at first, but get a little bit familiar with that. We're also going to talk about saving here in the next upcoming uh, segments. Thanks so much for watching this quick snippet taken directly out of the Photo Editing and DigiScrap Academy. I'm Michelle Stelling, the founder of the National Association of Digital Scrapbookers. And if you like these videos, I will go ahead and post some links within this area. Maybe it's over here or down here or down here. Um, but anyway, I will post those and you can hit the pause button and go ahead and catch up with us on YouTube or on a private Facebook group or on our website. Thanks again for watching and have a great day. Bye for now.